this is going to be a huge domino effect that's going to affect a lot of people. And when those farms stop producing, my biggest fear is the land being primed for development. The worst possible outcome for the farmland in Whatcom County is concrete. This is the Real Food, Real People podcast. So I'm here with season three guest Ona Lee from the podcast. And I told you we were going to we're going to be talking about farms struggling in Washington and why this is happening. We're collaborating with Save Family Farming on this. And that's what we're all about is saving family farms. And part of doing that is talking about why it's so difficult right now for family farms to continue here in Washington state. So I've said that I've had several people from the podcast guests that can't go on anymore. You're going to continue farming, but not in Washington. Explain why. Well, um, I guess there's a very simple reason and that's being priced out. (laughs) And the, the more complicated things that went into that were a combination of the property owners here wanting to sell. And at the same time, my husband who has an off farm job to basically make this happen, which I know a lot of farmers in Washington or anywhere yeah. have to do nowadays. Yep. Um, he suffered some injuries and he's going through kind of a difficult um, surgery and recovery phase. And between him not being working, them selling the property, we just, we were almost, we were so close to a point where we were buying property, but even with a down payment, you can't go to a bank and on paper say like basically two people don't have jobs. <laughs> so, and so it's just too expensive, to, too expensive to do it here. Yeah. I mean, maybe with a few different circumstances, but that's kind of how fast it happens for some folks, but especially us, I suppose right now. And you're just doing the real mm-hmm. small, like micro farm homesteading kind of thing so far, but you wanted to make it bigger, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, and that was the other big issue was, you know, the top that we, the most we qualified for still fell short 25 to 50% of what I really hope to do. (laughs) And we've already vastly outgrown the space for what we do. So staying here really wasn't viable either. Um, You know, and we were offered, the landowners offered for us to buy this, but the price for what it is, I've honestly, I've never heard of anything like that. And it just, that you not going to happen. So one of the things that you've told me about that has been a big pressure point for you being able to stay in Washington is water. Mm-hmm. Explain what the water situation is for, for small farms, family farmers. I mean, if you don't have water rights attached to a property that you're buying and it's not federally legal to collect your own water and create well, very expensive <laughs> alternative watering solutions than what do you have? I mean, I'm not an experienced dryland farmer um, and I don't, that's the other huge issue is the state that we're moving to. Um, I know that water rights are becoming more and more, more and more of an issue everywhere, but where we're moving to, like the property that uh, it's five acres, small farmhouse, um water rights so it has water yes and this is in new mexico new mexico so we're in rio Rio Riba county five acres small farmhouse with water rights about half of what is being asked for this property here yeah it's a bigger property and it's uh it's almost five times as big (laughs) for the workable parts (laughs) so you have to go to new mexico which people wouldn't think would be the you'd think it would be New Mexico where you'd have a hard time getting water, but you can get water there. Water rights. But here in Washington, and you were looking for properties and a lot of them had water rights issues because of what's going on, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And in, well, and anything that I saw that had somewhat viable or transferable water rights are along Swift Creek, <laughs> which as you know, is a huge contamination zone. So that was the, in the three and a half years that we've been really intently looking pretty much nothing that seemed viable um, in Whatcom County has come up for us. And a huge part of that is water rights. So what's it like to have to be in this situation? Oh, um, (laughs) 
sorry. It's okay. Um, on both sides, like my paternal family, maternal and paternal side, um, I am a Pacific Northwest native by at least six generations. Um, my mom's side have been farmers in the Pacific Northwest for, for at least four generations. And prior to that, as many generations as we know, and a huge, huge um, inspiration for what I do is to revive or save my family farming lineage, especially in Washington state. Um, to get that close to something, um, and have just two, what seems like minor details, um, knock you off that axis is, um, well, first of all, it's incredibly humbling, <laughs> but it's also very telling, I think, of the times. And I know that we are not unique. Yeah. Our story is not unique. Um, and I'm honestly, uh, I'm really worried about the state of family farming in Whatcom County. Mm. Um, why? how can this keep going? I mean, we have more advantage than so many other people do. And we're not wealthy people, obviously, because we wouldn't be going through this if we were, but we're normal. Okay. We have our means met people and we have a down payment. And my husband is a licensed electrician and that's not enough. And that means that a lot of family farms, especially family farms where people aren't going off site, if they're relying solely on the income from the farm, this is going to be a huge domino effect that's going to affect a lot of people. And when those farms stop producing, my biggest fear is the land being primed for development. Because, you, I mean, the worst possible outcome for the farmland in Whatcom County is concrete. Yeah. And like this place as well is, you know, we have places where we grow food and where we raise animals, but we have kept and purposefully attempted to integrate the native flora and fauna yeah. and to um, tend to that just as much as we tend to anything that we intentionally put here. And this place is being marketed as an investment property Mm. or a vacation property. Um, no one that has the money to pay for this <laughs> is going to want to utilize it for just growing food or raising a family, in my mind. Maybe. That would be cool. But um, I think the prospects for this land are very much like the prospects for a lot of other places and a lot of other properties where um, there's nothing... There's nothing preventing this from going away. <laughs> yeah. What what is the what is the future then for family farming here and and yeah, what what should people know about what's happening? As dismal as it feels and as heartbreaking as it is, I still think that we all have to more than ever stick together. I think regardless of the type of farming, Mm -hmm. The more organic, small or micro farms and the larger, more conventional farms all really need to work together more than we ever have. Mm. And I think that there's still so much hope, but people really have to get aware of what's happening and take it seriously. And like, don't let your heart be so broken you can't function, but like, you ha this is the time <laughs> to do something. Um, and I think the biggest, the, my main thing is that I won't stop advocating for Whatcom County. Um, I won't stop doing whatever I can from where I'm at, but it's going to be on the residents here. Um, and it's something like, I just really hope people understand what the possible negative outcomes of this are. So what needs to change in your view? <clears throat> 
I mean, you're talking about small farms, you know, micro farms all the way up to, you know, medium and even some large farms are experiencing some of these same things. Yeah. I mean, I think that working together, um, and that means like working together with our community, the tribes, farms of all sizes and different kinds. And I think that this, what we're experiencing here is a microcosm for pretty much all of the problems <laughs> that we're experiencing in 2024 is that more and more people need each other and community needs to exist. And that I just, I want to see that work be done um, to prevent the worst outcome, like I said, which is concrete. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that this is happening. It's a loss for our community here and for our state for you guys to go. Yeah, are you ever going to come back? I have to. <laughs> yeah. I have to. That the uh I won't be deterred. <laughs> um but yeah, I also I, it was the need to farm is so important to me that where that happens it doesn't really matter to be honest. Um we had to go to the next step and New Mexico is the next most homey place and it's where we can make it work. And once we've put in our time there and feel like we're really fully suited and ready to go, then we'll try again, I guess, you know, but like I said, I really hope from now until then it doesn't get worse. Yeah. Cause if it does, then I don't know what the chances are. Well, I think people really need to know what is going on. And that this is actually happening. It's not bluster. It's not just a political talking point. It's happening to real families like yours. Mm -hmm. It's just too hard to make it. And why? We need to get serious about why. Let's look at that. Let's go after some of these barriers that, you know, some things that may have started with a good intention, mm -hmm. but are now actually keeping family farming from happening. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't add up <laughs> it's not sustainable as the buzzword goes right yeah right <laughs> so thank you for uh having me out here and sharing your story with us on the podcast mm -hmm. before and you've actually been on the podcast twice when we talked about <laughs> online harassment yeah and now having me here this time and good luck in new mexico good luck with your travels and yeah. moving and all that can't be easy yeah you know we're gonna make it work one way or another but yeah Right now, it's kind of the crunch time. <laughs> this is the Real Food, Real People podcast. These are the stories of the people who grow your food.